Linux on Mars, lots of Android updates, random Linux news, more Star Wars content, and more. This is Headphones Neil News for February 2021. It's Headphones Neil! What's up, guys? Welcome to this month's episode for Headphones Neil News. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil. So, lots of things happened this month, lots of it random, nothing too specific to really talk about or discuss. So, for this month's topic, it's gonna not necessarily be anything spe- special to talk about. I mean, it's special if you're a part of NASA or follow space travel and that sort of stuff, so I thought I would make the topic about that. Um, as far as Android news, lots of stuff got updated this over the past month or since the last episode, so I thought I'd share that. Linux news, about the same, just a bunch of random updates, so nothing special there. Still haven't set up my laptop with Linux to talk about that process or do any sort of updates there. And then a few bits of random Star Wars news for releases. Um, coming up and announced so I thought I would talk about that. So to start it off with this month's topic it's going to be about Linux on Mars. So if you watch the news you know that NASA recently landed a new rover on the surface of Mars. We got some new photographs, a cool new video showing the landing process via the sky crane. So overall all sorts of good stuff but the thing that's actually really cool is that the software framework that they're using on I want to say the helicopter or the drone basically that they're using um, as far as my understanding of it I wasn't quite sure if it was the rover itself or the drone but the software framework work that they're using for it um, is a variation of Linux so rather than the usual custom software that they use they went with an open sourced version of some Linux software because they found that that system and setup would work better than anything that they could custom build. So I thought that was a pretty cool topic um, to discuss and share, um, just because it's something that has that is actually open source and available on GitHub. So if you wanted to try and implement that software on your own, it is supposedly and theoretically possible. So the software is called F Prime. So it's a what they're it's described as what they're calling a flight proven multi platform open source flight software framework. So it from what I understand it decomposes flight software into specific discrete compo- components um, with their own defined interfaces. So you could technically set it up if you have, I guess, your own drone that you want to set up and have the flight software installed on it. Um, it does use the C++ framework for core capabilities, message queues, and threads, so that's kind of how it handles stuff internally. Um, the F Prime software suite does have modeling tools for specifying components and connections and things like that for code generation, so in order to compile it and set it up, it does have that framework as well. Um, and there's various ready to use components that are growing as well. So as the community develops it and shares our code, then that will be available if um, you find that someone else has created something you can use. Um, so overall, I just thought that was pretty cool. So I thought I would start off this this particular month's um, episode with that, that we have open source software running a drone on another planet. So we'll see how it holds up over time, what they learn by using that software, how they handle, maybe if they share it, um, how they handle um, pushing that code out to the drone and um, the lander in order to um, provide updates and stuff like that. I don't know how they handle security updates or if that's even a problem there or how that's contained, but all of that sounds pretty cool, so I can't wait to see um, how they handle all of that sort of stuff. So with that, let's jump right into um, this month's Android news. So um, to start it off, if you're a user of Google Lens, then it now has offline support. So um, you can download various language um, libraries and stuff like that in order to um, 
better translate stuff offline with, with pictures and text and things like that. So there's less reliance on your um, data connection. If you're a Tasker user, it got updated to version 5.11.14. So it now you can now run tasks using Google Assistant. So once you initiate your Google Assistant code word, you can tell it to run a specific task and it will do that. So if you want to start a timer or run a particular command, I guess if you have it tied to your smart light bulbs or something like that, then that's also something you can handle. Uh, Telegram got updated to version 7.4, so it um, supports importing WhatsApp messages via the share menu, so you can um, import your WhatsApp messages into Telegram. Um, it also got a new widget, which I haven't had a chance to play around with, um, but if you w prefer to have your um, um, text or to see your text messages on your home screen, then that is now um, possible or a feature of the software. Uh, YouTube is rolling out a new feature coming soon called Clips to highlight five to sixty second, five to sixty seconds of live or uploaded uploaded videos. So if you want to highlight a specific video or create a promo for certain content that you're uploading, you can do that. Um, in other news, there's also there or YouTube's also rolling out with a feature called Shorts, which is kind of like their version of TikTok videos. So if you want short videos that no, don't necessarily work as uploaded content or a clip or anything like that, then you can have that. Um, and if you're using the the Android version of YouTube, it was updated to support playing 4K HDR videos. So it's less reliant on whether your device supports it and is going to be an option that you can switch to. So if you want the highest um, version, or highest quality version of a video, then that's now possible. So how your screen displays it um, will also be dependent on how you see it, but it's rather than seeing you know, Matt, like if your device supports up to 1080p, rather than just seeing the max 1080p resolution option, you can select the 4K HDR option, but you'll still only be seeing it at 1080p or 720 or 2K, whatever your screen um, resolution is, that's all you'll be seeing it at, but you can have the option to have a higher quality version of the video come through. So there's less um, noise and deg video degradation and um, improved there, or there will be improved audio quality as well if you select that option. Um, Apple released an um, extension for Google Chrome this, and over the past few weeks for iCloud, so you, now, you can now more easily sync your, pa your iCloud passwords using Chrome. Uh, for those of you who used Google Stadia, um, as of March 17th, FIFA 21 was released. Um, even though Google Stadia's, or Stadia's games and development department got shut down, so... Um, if you do, or if it's a third party game, I guess the development or the developer will still support it. But if you are playing a game that was released by the Google Stadia division, then um, as of this recording, the developer and bug fixes and things like that are kind of up in the air. Um, Google has promised that they'll be, they'll continue working on um, resolving bugs, but the time frame is kind of up in the air or how they're going to handle that is still uncertain. Uh, for those of you who are into the custom launcher screen on Android, um, Action Launcher got an update to allow widget stacks, which mimics the scrollable widgets like you see in iOS 14. So it's still kind of relatively in beta form, but you can basically set a 5x2 widget. Um, you do have to select the widget stack widget in order to do that, and then you select your first widget, it'll um, load it, and then you swipe up and add the next one, I, or something along those lines. But you can basically create a scrollable widget like you see on iOS, but for Android. Um, if you're in the Android 11 uh, modding and ROMing um, scene, then Gravity Box 11 Beta uh, Beta 1 was released with Android 11 support, so um, you can now play around with that to um, tweak your Android settings and options and stuff like that. Um, I haven't gotten around to it just because I have not had a chance to uh, root my device. I kind of want to get into that, but development is still kind of um, fuzzy and hazy for my OnePlus 8 Pro. So I'm giving it a bit of time until 
uh, various other components like um, touch with recovery port and ultimately some more ROMs are further along in development and more readily easily or more easy to install and set up. Right now it's still a lot of manual steps so I'm holding off on that but if you're on a device that has a, a more further along development process then Gravity Boss 11 is something to play around with if you so choose. Uh, for those of you who still use RSS readers like uh, Focus Reader or Feedly or the old reader, um, you might be happy to know that G Reader got an update um, recently up to version 5.0.1 with a new dark mode, improved podcast and video playback support and various other bug fixes. So it looks like the developers are working on modernizing the app for newer platforms, new UI and stuff like that. For those of you who are Google Photos users, it got a nice little update for double tap and pinch to zoom functionality for videos via, via server side update. So there's nothing you need to do on your end, um, but you can now get that um, update to better um, manage and view your um, videos. If you're in or in related news, if you're a Google One user or subscriber, then you can you'll also be getting new Google Photos um, photo editing options. So these are previously limited to um, Google Pixel users, but um, I guess in a further effort to monetize Google Photos, some uh, some of those um, f photo editing options are now being being pushed out to all Google Photos users. As assuming you have a Google One subscription. Um, it wasn't clear if it was for specific subscribers or for all subscribers regardless of the tier, but I'm keeping an eye on it just um, in case it is for everybody. Um, for those of you who own a Nintendo Switch and wanted to get Android 10 on it, um, an unofficial version of Lineage OS 17.1 was released. Um, I did look into this a bit to get it on my Nintendo Switch, but it does require a various or, or a very specific version of the Nintendo Switch software. So if you've updated the software or are on a more recent version, then um, installing it might installing Lineage OS 17.1 may not be supported. So definitely read all the steps and um, check out the forms on XDA before you get started just to make sure your version of the Nintendo Switch is supported because I was interested in getting it installed but my version of the Switch is on the most recent updates so it was not necessarily or it was kind of 50-50 as far as whether it would be supported or not so um, I'm holding off there to until for further development to see if they'll ultimately get it um, available on all versions of the Nintendo Switch um, hardware or if it's going to be limited to specific versions. So um, definitely worth checking out if you want to turn your Android or your Nintendo Switch into an Android um, tablet. It does look pretty cool, but and they do offer a regular tablet mode and an Android TV um, version or a general tablet ROM and an Android TV ROM to be more specific on what they offer but those are there's um, two options available and that's something to definitely check out via the XDA forums um, for the Nintendo Switch. Um, in related Lineage OS news um, they're scheduled to drop support for Android 9 so if you do have an older device um, look out for the a newer version of the ROM um, notably running on Android 10 if your device will still be supported. Um, usually when they start drop or usually when Lineage OS or custom ROM developers start start dropping support for older Android versions um, you usually if it's depending on the device you may still have an official version of a newer ROM but if you still want to try a newer version of Android on your older devices there might be developers who uh, release an unofficial version meaning that development is not necessarily going to be consistent it might not be um, daily or weekly it might be you know bi-weekly or bi-monthly or monthly or basically less frequent just based on the time they have and time they have to implement bug fixes and stuff but um, definitely check out XDA for your device check support, see what kind of activity is going on or see if your device is just um, too old to be supported and look out for the last version of Android 9 for your device so you have the latest updates, bug fixes and all of that and um, go from there. 
Um, in Google TV news, Apple TV is now available on it. So if you're an Apple TV subscriber and you use Google TV, then you can now uh, sync those up and watch Apple TV on Google. Um, Google Maps got an update to add support for, um, or to so add support to pay for parking from within the app. So more support for contactless um, payments. So just one step to make it easier to pay for parking on the go. Um, Google, the Google Play Store got a nice update to add the ability to share apps and updates with friends via the nearby share menu. So if you have an update that your uh, friend may not have, or if you want to um, share an APK via the Google Play Store with somebody, then that is now a nifty little option. I have not really had a need or necessity to do something like that or share an app that way because if an app is available in the Play Store, I can just search on their phone or I can just share the link directly with them. So um, I'm not sure about the purpose of this or if it's more for developers to share the app um, with their friends, but it's a nice little update if it does come in handy for you. Um, in general Android news, the Android 12 developer preview one was released this week. Um, it basically adds new privacy controls along the lines of what we see on, saw on the latest iOS version. So, um, basically more privacy options to keep your, um, privacy settings to yourself, uh, more control on who can access your contacts and data, location, microphone access, and that sort of stuff. So uh, look out for that. There's more audio encoders by HEVC. There's now AVIF image support for better image compression, more foreground service optimization, so less chance for apps to randomly take control of your foreground. Um, UI of what you're looking at as you're using your device. Uh, notification UI updates, uh, which I think was pretty cool because it looked like the notification drawer in the developer preview now supports um, color theming based on your wallpaper. So assuming you have a color that it can read, then your notification drawer will change color. Um, the, the notification drawer also has um, some more optimizations and faster responsiveness. Um, there will be more Android updates via Google Play, so more modularization of Android. Um, it's more optimized for tablets, foldables, and TVs, so basically more support for newer form factors. So um, as a developer, this is kind of where it's more useful at the moment, but once we start getting into later developer previews like um, the third one, maybe the fourth one if it's needed, but as you get into later versions, it gets more and more functional. Um, I think I've used like a developer preview, maybe two, and then definitely a third one for my OnePlus 8 Pro when Android 11 first came out. And I want to say by the time you get to developer preview three, it, the, it's usually like about 85 to 90% done, but random stuff doesn't work. Like for me, it was Google Pay and a few, I think um, password syncing or the fingerprint sensor wasn't working right and stuff like that. But usually stuff that's very specific and I think stuff like um, Netflix and Disney Plus didn't work because of the level of um, the privacy settings for um, whatever the um, secure video security platform is called but random stuff doesn't work but you could always sideload the, the app in order to get it working but the full features don't work, work quite yet so for me I think I'll probably wait till a open beta is available or the final version um, but some of those backend updates look pretty cool. I want to see if they're going to further implement the theming support so you get a more dynamic notification drawer. But overall, more security updates and audio and video or audio and image improvements. Um, in other launcher news, Launcher Launcher is now resuming updates via their new developers. So um, from the changelog I saw, it's going to be, be rebuilt on Launcher 3, which is from Android 10, so a more modern launcher to help fix um, and avoid um, the app from um, crashing. They're going to fix the at a glance widget and improve various other animations so it works better on um, newer devices. Uh, Netflix for Android got updated with a smarter download feature based on your recommendations. So rather than downloading um, shows that you've started, which is what the current download manager um, or smart download um, does, um, the new 
download a feature will download recommendation recommend recommended TV shows and movies based on stuff you watched and stuff you like. Um, the cool thing here is that you can set the download amount of storage space for it to use. So you can do something like one gigabyte, three gigabytes, or I think five or ten gigabytes. So the app, so Netflix doesn't willy nilly download stuff until your um, storage space is used up. It will download um, only up to the amount you say and only on Wi-Fi. So your data plan doesn't get used up and your storage space doesn't get used up. So that way you only have as much content as you want and. Um, you don't run out of space. And finally, Magis Magisk version 22 got updated, which now merges the Magisk app and Magisk manager for improved app support and hiding on Android 5 and above, Samsung or support for the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus and a few other items. And I guess it supposedly makes it easier to install the app and get rooted on your device. So. If your older, if your bootloader is already unlocked and you want to root your device or even install a custom ROM, then this is one step in making that easier to do. So, with that being said, let's jump into um, this week's Linux news. So, to start it off, uh, LibreOffice 7.1 got released with faster find and replace, improved Unicode support and DocX compatibility, so improved support with Microsoft Office, new animations and various other improvements. So basically look out for a lot of um, visual improvements and back-end updates as well. Um, if you use OpenBSD, it got a, or a version 6.8 got released with better hardware support and bug fixes, uh, more Broadcom um, temp uh, support for the Raspberry Pi, improvements to the wireless network drivers, and various other file system and system level driver support. So basically a bunch of backend um, improvements, so look out for that. Um, the Linux kernel version 5.1.1 was released uh, with new mount options for um, the BTFS and Ceph file systems, uh, support for Intel Software Guard, and initial support for the AMD graphics APUs, ARM, UIA, and MediaTek support, and various other backend improvements and support. So look out for that if you're, I think um, it's currently not pushed out to most um, Linux build, so if you want to try it, uh, try out the early versions of it, then um, definitely check out or do run the updater there. But it's still early stages, so much like any other updates of this sort, um, be wary of that update that it might break stuff. Um, VLC announced that version 4.0 is coming in 2021. It's going to come with a massive redesign, notably of the, their UI integration for more online services, uh, monetization platform, uh, web UI, um, improved security, and their version of an IMDB alternative, which I didn't note the name, but it's supposedly something along the lines of IMDB meets Wikipedia. So not only is it supposed to support um, more content for, or co context for content like actors and trivia and that sort of stuff, but more detailed information on that. So rather than just seeing that, for example, Tom Hanks was in a film, you can see his bi supposedly see his biography as well. Um, from what I can tell, it looks like only the desktop version is going to be available. They mentioned a uh, Win32 platform version of it at first, so I imagine that's only Windows at first, but I, ima but I imagine they'll roll out uh, Linux and Mac versions around the same time, if not at the same time as the Vin Windows version. Um, so that's why I included it with the Linux news. Um, I didn't see anything as far as the Android and I think maybe even the iOS version, if there is an I iOS version of VLC, but I imagine that's probably something that will be maybe later in 2021 or sometime in 2022. And finally, KDE is getting an update to version 5.2.1. is getting a new global theme called Breeze Twilight, which merges a couple, a bunch of different dark and light elements, a new color scheme, unified bar style, a new app launcher, and various other bug fixes and visual improvements. So, uh, look out for that. I'm sure most um, Linux distributions will or distros will. Um, start implementing that as they're able to include it with their distro in a safe and stable form. So if you wonder why things change or you have more options, that is why. So with that, let's jump right into this 
month's uh, set of Star Wars news. So to start it off, The Mandalorian Season 3 is scheduled to start filming in April of 2021. Uh, the last article I read said April 5th, so unless anything has changed, that's about the time we'll, um, we might potentially get to see um, start to see some more updates, hopefully some screenshots and more promotion of that sort of stuff. Um, a new novel or a new comic series called Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters is set for a release from May to October of 2021. It's going to cover the time between um, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi when Boba Fett was um, set to deliver Han Solo to Jabba the Hutt and all of the issues that he went through and all the trouble he had to go through in order to avoid other bounty hunters, keep Solo safe, and ultimately get to um, Jabba's palace. So I'm kind of also hoping we get to see that delivery and handoff, and I'm sure we're going to get to see a lot of different bounty hunters. So um, I don't remember if you know bounty hunter like Aura Singh was still alive at that time. Um, potentially, but I'm kind of refer thinking back to um, the Solo film where they do mention that um, what's-his-name killed um, Aura Singh, but it was more like she fell off of a cliff, so maybe we'll even see a connection with Boba Fett and um, some of those, and um, Crimson Dawn. But we may even potentially see um, Bosk and various other um, bounty hunters at this time, so I can't wait to see that. Um, a new novel called The Secrets of the Sith is coming in August of 2021. This is a follow-up to the novel Secrets of the Jedi. So the Sith version is going to be narrated by Emperor Palpatine and we're going to get a lot more backstory on the various Sith Lords over the years and a lot of um, new pictures and imagery and not, um, that sort of stuff. I did not see if there's going to be a Kindle or at the time I looked it up I didn't see if there's going to be a Kindle version so at the moment it's going to be a hardback version potentially even a paperback to buy so it's going to be a physical medium to read so I don't know if there's going to be maybe pop-ups or more 3D images or something along those lines but um, if you're if you own the Secrets of the Jedi novel and want the Sith version then definitely check it out or if you're a more if you're more of a Sith person then definitely check that out coming in August of 2021. Um, also announced was a new uh, game called for the Nintendo Switch called Star Wars Hunters. Star Wars Hunters. It's a competitive arena combat game for team-based multiplayer ba multiplayer battles featuring a various set of characters in the Star Wars universe. Not necessarily the ones we've seen and know about, but a whole new set of characters as well. So, from in watching the trailer, there's a new Wookiee. Uh, Stormtrooper with a railgun, or basically a, I think, or maybe even it's a Gatling gun. A new Jedi with a couple of lightsabers. So, um, not necessarily um, characters we know, but a variety of other characters and new characters as well. And finally, um, as per media announced that they're they'll be porting Star Wars Commando. Um, to the PS4 as of April 6th, so look out for that if you're a PS4 owner or if you're a fan of Star Wars Republic Commando. Um, so, um, and if you're wondering why that developer sounds um, familiar, they're the same developer that's been releasing um, Star Wars games to the Android and iOS platforms, notably Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Um, the Sith Lords. So I'm also now kind of hoping that they are able to release Star Wars Republic Commando to Android and iOS um, just to see if we can play that on um, those on the mobile platforms as well, seeing as how it looks like they're able to um, translate um, desktop games into um, mobile games. So um, overall, a, a good and intriguing release there. I don't own a PS4 myself, so I can't play it to test it out. But um, seeing as how Republic Commando is now a relatively old game, um, I, it wouldn't hurt to see it on a mobile platform to play it um, there. And the game was released in February of 2005, so it is old enough and around the time that Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 came out. So um, hopefully we'll get to see... Um, more variations on of the game on various other platforms. 
Um, so with that, that is actually all there is for this particular edition of Headphones Neil News. So if you want to get in touch with me, provide your own feedback, uh, commentary, updates, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01, the website for past episodes, subscription links, getting access to the show notes to provide your feedback there, and all of that good stuff can be found at PatelN01.com. The Patreon is patreon.com slash PatelN01, where you can now also get bonus content. So as a patron, Patreon subscriber, you'll um, not only get this episode, but you'll get the bonus episode that I release uh, right after as well, all in one feed. So look out for that as well. Um, but that's all there is for this particular episode. Um, so with that, I'll start working on next month's issue. Um, and of course, if you like this episode or any other episode, be sure to uh, comment on um And give a good rating on iTunes. If you like the content that I put out on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Or like the videos and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the various content I'm putting up there. So a bit of stuff there. Um, I'm currently playing Batman um, The Enemy Within for Android. Um, As far as other content coming up is um, the original Batman game by Telltale Games. Um, there's a couple of other games I've also downloaded as well, so as a patron you get access to when I start playing those. So you can leave your comment there or start providing your feedback on uh, Twitter as well. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode of Headphones Neil News, and until next time.